Hello everyone and welcome back to Affinity for Commander. My name is Alex and today we're going to be taking a look at one of the latest legends spoiled from the upcoming March of the Machines set. Well, technically two legends, but we'll ignore that. If you personally like any of the cards I'm going to be talking about here, or even wish to purchase the entire deck list for yourself, then be sure to do so through any of our lovely affiliate links in the description box below. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but really helps the channel out a lot. Now, onto our frog riding Cathar. A statement I never thought I'd make. Thalia and the Gitrog Monster are a 4-4 legendary human frog horror with death touch and first strike for 1 generic, 1 green, 1 black and 1 white mana. They read, You may play an additional land on each of your turns. Creatures and non-basic lands your opponents control enter the battlefield tapped. And finally, whenever Thalia and the Gitrog Monster attacks, sacrifice a creature or land. Then, draw a card. So this is literally the Gitrog monster and Thalia Heret Cathar smashed together in some manner of unholy matrimony. Which does beg the question, how did they have that saddle ready to go? I mean, like, the Phyrexian invasion happened pretty quickly and they just, they just had that ready? Was Thalia already intending to ride the Gitrog monster? It, it begs a lot of questions, really. But back to the card itself. Now we are missing the Gitrog Monster's line of text of whenever a land is put into the graveyard, draw a card, but the card is still broken regardless. But even without that little bit of text, we're still going to be making this deck oh, 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 oh so toxic. Elish Norn herself will have to change colour identities. Because she'll be green with Envy Martin Keeper. So we're planning on making a heavy stacks themed deck around denying our opponent's resources, getting value from our commander's attack trigger with light aristocrats sub theme, and we finally have two combos to help close the game down should just hitting people with a giant frog not be suitable. So let's start at the low end of our curve. At the one drop slot we just got about every mana producer because we want our commander out on turn three. This means that while our opponents are still trying to fix their shocks and their fetch lands, we'll all be coming in tapped and slow them down for a good long while while we ramp gloriously. Elvish Mystic, Lanoir Elves and Elves of Deep Shadow help round off the elf portion of our creature ramp. And then Birds of Paradise, Avacyn's Pilgrim and Deathrite Shaman fill out the rest by tapping for any colour, white and any colour, provided there's a land in the grave. Yes, okay, Deathrite is also an elf, but I just like to think him of as an honorary one-mana planeswalker in my mind. And then later on, when we're done ramping, we can take these one-mana creatures and use them as sack fodder for the frog, or can be clamped away in order to draw some cards with Skull Clamp, or sacrificed with Viserysia to shore up our draws. Plus, with a lot of death happening... That was a weird sentence to say. We're also running Tragic Slip, one of my favourite removal spells, as it's only one black mana to kill just about anything, and gets around indestructible. As well of course do Path to Exile and Swords to Plowshares, because white removal is still king. Now onto the two drops here is where the stacks and taxes really start rolling in. Archivist of Ogama says you can search, but I'm going to draw and gain life off of that. Blind Obedience says no to fast mana and fast creatures. Plus, Extort is also good for a little life gain and drain. Collector Oof says no to any and all artifact decks. And while we're here shutting down decks, Dranoth Magistrate for no commanders, and Gadag Teague for no big spells either, because fun is for other tables when we're playing this deck. And should we ourselves need to use an artifact or cast a big spell, we can just sack the stack's creature to our general's attack trigger, thus allowing us to manipulate when the effects go away for our benefit. But should anyone dare to be running any graveyard decks to three void walk and exiles all creatures put to the grave and lets us cast one later on? Plus, Calamity's Wake is also a great instant speed response to any reanimation spell, as well as a means of preventing any interruptions if used in our turn for when we want to combo off. 
We're also running a decent amount of removal here with Assassin's Trophy, Abrupt Decay, and Dam, which, in order, destroy anything, destroy anything cheap, and can just turn itself into a board wipe, and versatility is very good. Up to the 3 CMC slot, we have more fun cards in, actual Thalia herself, Avon Mind Sensor to really mess up our opponent's hopes for searching, Manglehorn to both destroy that one soul ring, but also make all of those signets come in tapped. Kambal, console of allocation, is a great way of draining our opponents from the audacity to play non-creature spells. And opposition agent, because I cannot overstate how much we want to mess with people's abilities to tutor their libraries for answers to all the nonsense we're doing here. We're also running two enchantments to slow down non-creature permanent star decks in aura shards to take advantage of our high creature count by turning them all into Reclamation Sage. And Aura of Silence, which just taxes those spells, but can be sacrificed to blow one up as well. But it's at this point we also remember that part of our commander is the Gitrock monster, so we need some heavy land synergies, if nothing else than for flavor wins. But also playing more lands when our opponent's lands are coming in tapped is honestly just such a level of dunking that I simply cannot possibly pass up the opportunity. Azusa, Lost But Seeking, ups our land drops per turn to 4 with our commander out, and a round up excavator and crucible of worlds means we can just keep recycling a fetch land for each of those land drops. Or if we're feeling particularly horrible, a wasteland or strip mine, and play and suck that four times every turn. <laughs> Why am I building this? Oh yeah. We are also running a few tutors in the deck as we need to get the specific stack piece for the table. No point in playing Dranath Magistrate against a table of Derevi and Yuriko. So, Court of Calling not only gets what we want onto the battlefield, but also means we get the correct creature we need, so that if that Brayer player is putting out of hand, we can get our oath. Moving on up to the four drop, we have our last bits of taxes with Smothering Tithe, because of course we're running Smothering Tithe. Yashan, Implacable Earth, not only grabs us two more lands to play with our commander, but also prevents our opponents from using life or permanence to pay for spells, costs, or activate abilities, which is honestly a lot more annoying than you might think. And two cards that I'll be very happy to have around on our general's attack trigger are Solemn for their draw on death trigger, and Alenda the Dusk Rose, who we really hope has seen a lot of death in her time in the field, so that when we sack her on attack, not only do we draw a card, but we get a huge board presence with it as well. Up to our top spot for the list, we have Wandering Archaic and Avenger of Zendikar rounding off our general creatures. Being a lovely annoying card to allow us to copy our opponent's cards so they don't pay up, and being just generally a really good wing con with our additional lands from our commander, Avenger of Zendikar can make us an army, or just a bunch of good blockers so we can get our other wing cons in, Revelark and Karmic Guide, who combo nicely with each other and a sack outlet to get as many die and ETB triggers as we want. And we'll just have to make sure to have a Blood Artist out while all this is happening to drain the table. Or we also have... Ulamog, the Infinite Gaia. Ulamog, I hear you ask. Well, we are also running the pre-Infinite Multiverse War version of the Gitrog monster as well, and once we pair him with the land of Dakmore Salvage, it should hopefully become clear. Allow me to explain. With the Gitrog monster out, we can sacrifice Dakmore Salvage to his ability, or to discard it to, let's say, Noose Constrictor. This means we'll draw a card, which we can then replace with the lands' dredge ability. This means we've drawn a card, milled two cards, and are now right back to where we started. Perform this loop will eventually mill us out, and that's where our big tentacle boy comes in. When they are discarded or dredged, they shuffle our grave and we can continue this, which will result in us drawing as much of our library as we want which should then result in us being able to use our earlier combo to help close out the game with as many answers in hand as we physically can have. 
Now, beyond Dakmore Salvage and its combo potential, we've also got a few other lands in the deck to make the most of Thalia and the Git Rogue Sacrifice ability. Flagstones of Trokar replaced itself with a Plains card, which can be a non-basic land, and Dunes the Dead and God's Eye Gate to Raikai both replace themselves with bodies when they are put into the grave. Field of the Dead also generates us bodies, but is a more viable piece given how much we'll be ramping, and the zombies make for great Gitrog and Thalia fodder. And finally, Vault of the Archangel to make all of our small creatures even more annoying as blockers, and Gavney Township, a card I'm fairly confident is in every single deck I own with green white in it. It's just great, hold up interaction, then if you don't need it, tap it out to buff your entire board with counters. It's honestly one of my favourite lands. Overall, Thalia and the Gitrog monster is an incredibly fun and strong commander. I mean, how could it not be? This card is good. This card is also good. It's stacksy, it's sacrificey, and it lets you get ahead while keeping your opponents down by making sure their blockers and their non-basic lands are coming into play tap. Plus, it also just randomly wrecks a load of combos that require creatures to come in and attack, like Godo, or, you know, thinking of you, Kiki. It's not a nice deck to play against by any means, like, don't take this to a casual table, whatever you do. But if you've got a higher level of play in your group, then by all means, put this down. Just make sure everyone knows that you're there for a long time. Not necessarily a good time. And that'll be the end of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. What cards are you excited to put into this deck? Or even excited about from March the Machines? Let us know in the comments below. We read every single one of them. As always, this video and all Affinity for Commander content is made possible thanks to the support of our amazing patrons. You guys are truly awesome. If you too would like to become a patron of the channel and get involved in stuff like our Discord and games with Martin and I, then be sure to check out our links in the description box below. You can also support the channel a few other quick and easy ways, liking this video, commenting, and sharing this video as well. Otherwise, guys, that'll be it from me for today. I've been Alex, and I'll see you next time.